welcome to So I've Been Told. This is episode number two, and I'm going to be talking to my good friends Joey Lanzone and Avery Reebsom. Both of those guys have uh, been around the same scene I have for the last several years uh, and have a lot of stories, and we go pretty deep talking about their bands and weird side projects so it's going to be a really fun episode i really hope you guys enjoy it now episode one i did not get a chance to or i i just forgot i was so busy just getting it done and getting it sent out so it could be on the internet i didn't put together a little corrections and clarifications section like i wanted to um there were a couple things that i got the facts wrong on or just didn't remember names well I was talking to Dan so I'm gonna try and do this at the end of every episode it's it will be on the end of this episode where I make these corrections and uh, and all that so to start out at the beginning of episode one I called Dan's project songs for left hand and it's actually music for left hand so I'm sorry Dan uh, the other, there's only like two more little things from the first episode that I wanted to mention, and that is the lead singer of Passion Pit's name is Michael Angelakos, or something along those lines. Uh, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but that is his name. It's not important, but it's there. Uh, and then the singer from Scattered Few is Alan Aguire, and the name of his project later on was Sky Glass Blue. So those were the really only two things that I I really wanted to clear up from the last episode. But thank you to everybody who listened. I don't know the numbers on how many of you checked it out, um, but I've talked to several of you, so I just really appreciate it. I'm glad that you're as interested in uh, going deep into this world of underground music as I am. And so I'm going to put the interview on here in just a second with Joey and Avery. Now, if you're a family member or something like that that's listening, I'm only going to say this once, but there is some uh, some language in this this show, and I'm sure there will be in other episodes as well. Um, so that's your disclaimer. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it because I don't really think it is a big deal. Um, but if you're, I just wanted to put it out there in case you're a new listener and have sensitive ears. So anyway, here is the show. There's a couple spots where I, I'm not real good at this editing thing yet. Uh, and hopefully I'm going to get better as more episodes happen. And the sound quality is hopefully going to go up the more episodes that I make. So yeah, um, just bear with that hopefully nothing is too weird as far as the 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 cuts so enjoy this sit down with joey and avery so joey lands on so eating some butterscotch right now yeah it's it's a couple days after christmas the coffee's done and there's the tree is lit. I'm lit. Joey's lit. I'm drinking a cup of Coca-Cola. Well, such good product placement, Adam. I'm sure they're going to pay you like $20,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the plan. I'm going to name drop them enough that they're going to feel obligated. Yeah. Uh, we are in my apartment. There's new stuff around... Because my roommate and I both got things for Christmas, and there's candy and cookies, and all is right with the world. So I'm hanging out with with Joey, and we've known each other for a long time. So I figure, and he's been a part of the uh, the music scene here in Rochester, and now in Buffalo for a long time considering how young the guy is I'm OG and uh so I figure we'll uh we'll chit chat a little bit so um I was explaining to Dan on the on the first podcast that I'm just going to embrace 
my own narcissism, and I'm going to uh, insert myself into your story. So, feel free to insert yourself into my anything. <laughs> so, when did when did you and I meet? What were your first memories of of me and our first interactions? April third, two thousand eleven. This guy needed ninety dollars to get to fucking Canadaigua. And he tried to rob me. So I went to go get some coffee. And I was talking with these, uh, these people. <laughs> and, uh, one thing led to another. And uh, I ended up going to this, uh, hardcore show at the Bug Jar where these fuckers played in their old band. This fucker. Yeah. And that was Endangered Youth. Yeah. Do you remember who else played that show? The Curl and Drag. Suit 'em up. Pre uh Dick Natillo. And uh shit. Who was supposed to play but that guy got stabbed. Oh, that was a show that Such Gold was supposed to yeah. play and, and Ben got stabbed in Boston, so That's what you get for being in Such Gold. Uh so yeah, uh so we've known each other for a while. Um, how would you describe your interactions with the Rochester uh, kind of DIY music scene? How would you describe Rochester DIY no, I was, Rochester's uh, DIY music not, scene with me? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying like how would you describe it now. Like how would you describe your interactions with it over the years? Um, a lot, as Biggie Smalls put it, shit's done changed. Back in my day, first started going to shows. For the record, Joey's only 20. At the Meow House, and North Street, and the subway is where I got my start. That was years ago. And then I went to see Guar, and then I just kind of like stopped. And, uh, then in April of the next year, I started going to, uh, fucking hardcore shows and shit. And that got old pretty quick, because you know how hardcore is. I do. And I can't open this fucking pack. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the, what were some of the first, uh, Rochester bands you saw and, like, um, not just, like, you saw, and also, like, bands that you saw that you were into. Uh, Endangered Youth. Fucking love the curl and drag, dude. Fuck, that's some good shit. Check them out. I don't think they're a band anymore, but... I think they, I think they might be. I feel like I heard Tim Avery mention them once recently. I think dude used to be in Achilles, and Achilles fucking slays. Achilles is... Arguably the best hardcore band to come out of Rochester. Mm, maybe. In my personal opinion. I'm, I mean, I'm oh, not actually, originally... yeah. Like, I'm not originally from here, so I don't have, like, all of the history. Well, I don't know. It'd, it'd probably be a toss-up between Achilles and how we are. Buffalo kids aren't happy. <laughs> Buffalo is home to one of the most self-absorbed... Fucking shit eating scum fuckery that I've seen in a long time. Everybody's so absorbed with their own ideologies and looking cool to everybody else. It's like a. It's almost like going to a show is like going to homecoming dance now. Everybody's so fucking cool. Do you remember? No, you weren't with us. But I went to a show, this is a while before you were in, this is while we were still doing stuff at the Meat Grinder and all that, and for a little while they were doing shows at the Golden Key. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Joe's car got broken into. Yeah, th- that was at an Endangered Youth show at the Golden Key. We were playing with... Uh, Condition Oakland? No, we weren't playing with Condition Oakland, we were playing mm. with... Robin and the Hoods played. And also, <laughs> also, this was one of the last shows for Beardage. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's were... a long time ago. Yeah, and there was another, like, grindcore band. I think... <laughs> what the fuck did you put in grindcore? The show didn't make any sense. <laughs> um, Mother was in the name of the grindcore band. I can't remember. Um, But yeah, anyway. So there was that show, but another time I went there when Condition Oakland was playing, and that was with... No, the crack. I was thinking the Crack Horse played, but the Crack Horse didn't play. Um, Women's Studies played, and uh, what's that band? Utah Jazz. Yeah, like they played, and maybe Robin and the Hoods was on that show as well. But anyway, I went to that show, and um, we have a friend named John Kiss, who used to. He doesn't anymore because he lost it, but he used to. Wear an orange hat, like an orange beanie, all of the time. And we went to the show at the Golden Key, and there were just like, like buffalo, like hipster kids in orange hats everywhere. <laughs> like every, it's like it was like one of them like came to a show in Rochester. It was probably the Mischief Brew show. <laughs> one of them came to the Mischief Brew show, saw John Kiss. And thought, that guy looks really cool. And then they all just started wearing orange hats in Buffalo. <laughs> and that person would be Ian Archibald. Who was at that Mischief Brew show. Who is the guitarist for one of my bands. Does he wear an orange hat? I could see him wearing an orange hat. Has he ever... You should find out if he's ever worn an orange hat. I will. And then, then report back and I'll, I'll let the listeners know on the, on the, uh, on the next episode. The next episode. <laughs> the next episode. If I have any more listeners after having you on. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <coughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll work through some of the, some, some stuff. We're working through some stuff. Um, that, Leading up to where you are now and the band you're in now, uh, we'll get there in a, in a few minutes. But let's uh, uh, let's talk about the meat grinder because you were there for for the majority of the time. That was in, uh, in ho- a house that I uh, I lived at and ran shows out of with John Kiss, who was in Endangered Youth, and also Steve Haramis, who was the drummer in Endangered Youth, and. Eric Lundy and several other several other people lived there, and we ran shows out of our basement. Um, and and Joey was around for a lot of it, and so I, I I'd like to hear your uh, your take on things. Go into as much or little detail. Go into as much. Go into lots of detail. I feel like this is this is radio gold. Well, to put it in short. Shit's fucked up. Hospital. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of shit went down in that place. A lot of drinking. A lot of smoking weed. A lot of weed smoking. I think that was like when I actually became like a pothead. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because none of us that were living there were like, I mean, some of us did here and there, but none of us were really like pothead guys. Um, but lots of the people that hung out there were. A lot of drugs. So some of the time with a lot of people going there. <laughs> Towards the end. No, there was that part in the middle where Steve was in the living room and that guy just fucking busted out fucking pressed pills. I... I heard that story, but I don't really remember it, because I don't think I was... In, you were in I Pennsylvania. Was, I wasn't there, yeah. Yeah. Um, a few uh, people lived there that did not contribute positively. That, I I don't want to get in the habit of doing a lot of shit talking myself on yeah. this. I'll more let my guests do all the shit talking they want. Um, but I will back that up without saying, I won't say a name, but without, without saying a name, I'll, I'll back that statement up 100%. <laughs> and, um, yeah, a lot of jackassery. Oh. A lot of jackassery. <laughs> oh, 
burning a couch on the front <laughs> yard. <laughs> um, I distinctly remember, I believe it was Easter. And I was peeing on the neighbor's porch. And uh, he walks outside and looks down at me. He smiles, and then he realizes what I'm doing. And he starts screaming in my face, Put your fucking dick away, and get the fuck back inside. (laughs) And your response was? I've had a very bad day. (laughs) Uh, I didn't realize that that was... I mean, all these memories kind of fade together. Um, But if that was on Easter, then that was the show that was happening. Because... Despite despite the fact that we could tell tell like stories of debauchery from the meat grinder for hours, um, I'll pr- I'll try to bring it around to make this about like a, a little bit more about like the music. Um, that it's was not about the music anymore. <laughs> uh, the Fake Boys were on that show and uh, Light Years. Yep. Um, and then we all went down. To, Robin in the uh, Hoods. There was a picture of us all together at uh. Marks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the like culture, like the the music culture, um, and the scene that was happening during the period of time where the meat grinder existed? There was a lot of bands that did a lot of drugs, and there was a lot of pretentious fucks. And then there was like three or four bands that were pretty cool, like, generally cool. Well, yeah, you can you can name bands like that's yeah. really this is what this podcast is is name dropping bands. I try to do it in a positive light, but you can do it however you want because you are the guest. I don't want to. I don't want to burn too many bridges that I haven't burned already. I was gonna say you've already done done quite a bit of that, and we're only uh, <laughs> adding on. <laughs> so. But I'm like, already thinking about like a cigarette break too. <laughs> well, and the coffee's done. But uh, talk about like talk about what bands were cool at the time. Um, at first, I liked Robin in the Hoods. Um, I used to be into a lot of bands with shitty people in them, though. We used to really like uh, like uh, Bad Taste and uh, Flip Shit and uh, the Narks and Triclactagon's pretty cool. Um, one of the first bands I saw were, uh, no, I didn't see them. I had a VHS tape of them, and they were called the, uh, Shitty Faggots. And they were a, uh, very positive influence on me growing up. The, there were a lot of, uh, as far as bands that played the grinder, there was, there was a lot of, uh, kind of, it was kind of incestuous. To me, it seemed like there was a lot of, like, a lot of us really wanted to do John's mom. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of us really wanted to, like, we wanted to do creative things, and we wanted to start new bands and new projects, Um, some of which were good and short-lived. Most of which were... Oh, what was the name of Steve and Sean's, uh... Fucking Nintendo Core? I remember... Yeah, there was there was a brief period of time where it was, like, kind of Nintendo Core, where it was, um... Sean... On... His, like... His little fucking, uh... Yeah, his Yamaha thing. Yeah, and doing, like, electronic type stuff, and Steve on drums. And that was really cool... What the fuck was that But then called? Sean sold his, uh, his stuff. It wasn't male sex. It wasn't male, no. No, it started out as something else, and then it became male sex. And then male sex was... Male sex was a cyber grind band. Yes. That they performed live. And I don't remember anything from the set, but I remember that I they remember performed. I like, briefly. I, I assume I drank a lot of Jenny Cree Mail and Hurricane that night. That that was a lot of nights at the Meat Grinder. Yeah. Um, Going to Mustafa's. 
That's, Mustafa's that's this awful. guy that that used to sell me beer when I was since I was like fucking like fourteen. He was the owner 15. of uh, Monroe Convenience, Mufasa. right across the street. Monroe Convenience, R.I.P. Uh, and then there was L.A. Wannabes, <laughs> which was actually really awesome. Uh, and, uh, which was uh, Sean Beard, John Kiss. And who who else was in that? Steve. And was it Steve? Did he play drums? Or did Sean play drums? I have no idea. Yeah. But I know it was like just Pornographic like, images. Yeah, but LA Wannabes was just that like super snotty, like like sounded like the band John Kiss was like born to front. Yep. I just remember the chorus was like, I don't give a fuck about anything. <laughs> you remember that? Yep. I have, that stuff's on Bandcamp, and I will, uh... Send that to me. I, I'll put the song on the podcast. That yeah. is what I'll do. All right, so enjoy L.A. Wannabes. I don't remember what the name of the track is, but I'll I'll tell you in a little bit. again so we're back in the meantime Avery Reebsom has showed up so I know I said in the intro to the first podcast that these are mostly going to be one-on-one interviews but what's you what's know, wrong I figured, with a DP I figured, yeah then. like why why not just go for it so but yeah anyway we didn't really talk I know you've got places to be so let's talk about you've moved to Buffalo what what are you doing now like what bands are you in um, fill everybody in on that, and then you can send me links, and we'll get links online. Mad links, yo. Sausage links. <laughs> Link you to some my sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in a band that I play bass in called uh, Cardboard Homestead, and it's like, I don't know, folk punky, sort of, I guess. 
but the drummer is like a funk drummer, and I don't play full punk bass. I play real bass. I you don't know, like, a, like a bass. So, it's weird. And then I play drums in a um, lo-fi post-rock band called uh, Cobalt Blue. It's been around since about 2009. I'm drummer number six. Woo. Lucky number six. Come on. Sign us, please. We're recording professionally next month at Sonic Farm in Colden, New York. And it's going to be dope. Yeah. <laughs> so, Avery. Yes. Tell the people how you know me. Right. It's actually uh, it's a good story. I was uh, just trying to get into um, some new local music. <clears throat> so, I was going to this place that was called The Flying Squirrel. It's still around, but I don't know... What shows, shows I don't know what shows they're doing over there nowadays, but um, I remember I came to see, I think it was Endangered Youth and uh, the Root Hogs and um, what was that other band? <laughs> Out of Town Band. I was there. Yeah, it was a good show. Common Enemy. Common Enemy. And um, I Don't really go. just, I came just to see uh, Endangered Youth because I had heard they were making some noise in the, the local music scene, so... I get there with, with one of my best friends from high school, and um, Adam Kramer, you, showed up, and, and you asked me, you go, I hear you're trying to start a band, kind of like the saddest landscape, and I would set myself on fire for you, and at the time, I had been jamming in a two-piece called I Can't Stop Wondering, and I, I told you, yes, you know, that was exactly what the plan was, because two of those, those two bands are my favorite, some of my favorite bands, and... Uh, you told me to come over and play your basement, and then you told me about a super secret uh, endangered youth show in an alleyway right across the street from your house. <laughs> I, so I remember s- that. Yeah, I started That's showing up. I met day. Joey Lanzone, and Joey was into similar types of music that I was. Scram. Scram, and then we, uh, after that, I just started hanging out at the Meat Grinder probably every day. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were there daily, and then nightly, and you daily. Every so me when I tried to run up. And you slipped and fell. Yeah, in the trench coat. Yeah, I was wearing a, I was wearing a U.S. Army issued trench coat. I was smoking Camel Wides, I think. I can't remember what you were smoking, <laughs> but I remember that was fun. That was a good time. I smoked a lot of marijuana that day. <laughs> yeah. Rabbit trail. Remember, <laughs> kaleidoscopes. If you guys are listening, what's up? I love them. You guys, you guys played in my my living room. Compared to that was a sick me. show with with the highest Leviathan this back was, when they were a two piece. Yeah, that was yeah. the first highest Leviathan show. Um, anyway, this was this was post the wine, the yeah, wine we had, that we had night. Boxes of wine. <laughs> I drank an entire box of wine and started crying. <laughs> but you talking about cigarettes and and screamo? It made me think of you after <laughs> drinking a lot of wine. Shoving a carton of cigarettes into your jeans pocket, <laughs> but her car got towed that night. What does that have to? Who's Julia's? Oh yeah, she drove us by shoving she my did get, yeah, by she did shoving get my carton night. into my pocket drunkenly. I saved my cigarettes from being <laughs> impounded for like two days. Literally, we all were like, Joey, there's no way that that carton is gonna fit in your pants. <laughs> oh, I'll make it fit, <laughs> and then it just went. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that was great, dude. So that was the what was that? The Rust House? That, that was, was the Rust, Rust House. house. Yeah. yeah, that was. There weren't a lot of shows that happened there. At least not. I, there were a couple that happened. John W. Kiss the roast. Yeah, who played the show? I did in Highest Leviathan. Oh yeah, it was just it was the two piece fest, and that was a sick show. That was probably one of the best shows I've ever played. There were a lot of people at that show. Yeah. Um, love you, John Kiss. Yes, I lots know, of love. I know you'll be listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we didn't. I, I moved out of the meat grinder, and I, I kind of took a break from doing house shows, and that's kind of when I mostly started doing vineyard space shows. But um, yeah, so that the Rust House, a couple shows happened there, and were really fun. Are people still living over there? Uh, Jacob and Julia are still there. They're mar- uh, are they married now? They're married, yeah. and, and some other... They're they're renting out those apartments again. They're actually going to be moving into a different house in a few months, but they still own it. Um, Josiah's still over there? Josiah moved out. Moved out. He's gone. 
Uh, He's uh, making love to a wolf in some cornfield right now. <laughs> Crazy motherfucker. It's a beautiful yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. He's always been nothing but nice to me. Uh, so tell me about, uh, you've got a couple of projects going right now. Aside from, I can't stop wondering, is still, still active. So active. Um, and tell me about the other projects you're involved in now and uh, where you can find. Can you name every name? Where I can't stop wondering that you've had over the last few years. Um, high, uh, college Tweak, High School Submarine, um, Horse Probe. Uh, I can't stop wondering. Then we changed it to, I think in the beginning it was called um, uh, Meet Me at the Ocean. That was the first one we had. <laughs> Damn, there's been so many. Heavy I, Smoker. Heavy Smoker was Dirty Needle. Post Dirty Needle. Okay, yeah, no, actually, let's let's talk about that group of bands, the the Dirty Needle, Heavy Smoker era. Okay. Meat explain, Sweats. SS. Meat Sweats. Yeah. Yeah. Explain <laughs> what those were. Who all was, was in favorite these. band? Well, I uh, I don't have any friends, so I just start bands with the same five kids over and over and over, <laughs> and we all switch instruments. Um. Meet Sweats, actually, we have actually been writing new material now that Jake Norris, my bassist and vocalist, is home full-time working in Rochester. We uh, sat down in the Reapsome family basement the other night and wrote some really nice material, and that practice lasted about 10 minutes before Corm's amp blew out. Um, so we're working on new material and working on, on getting our gear in check. Uh, Meat Sweats is a three-piece punk band that I play drums for, and Jake Norris does guitar, uh, does bass guitar, and Cormac does uh, actual lead guitar. And that band was formed in 2012. No, that was that was post Dirty Needle. That's post Dirty Needle. Dirty Needle was um, Cormac and I got writer's block with I can't stop wondering, so we thought it would be a good idea to freshen up and switch instruments. So I. I grabbed Cormac's guitar and heavily down-tuned it, and then Corm got on the drums, and we played um, fast rock and roll, where I did a lot of um, yelling and shouting and talked about um, Jenny Cremel Jenny issues that I struggled with um, personally with love relationships and maybe even a little bit of substance, and Corm played fast D-beat on, um, on the drums, and that started in February, and that carried us all the way to <clears throat> the following October, I believe it was, yeah. before Gen we, before Genesee we just... Power Genesee Power Violence. Genesee Power Violence. Genesee Power Violence. Now, you guys, you guys have a release. Yes, we have. Um, tell, tell them about that. You probably It's probably out of print now, but that's the stuff that I like to talk about is... Yes, we put out a, a five-inch lathe cut... With um, a gentleman named Sean Beard and his project Waves Crashing Piano uh, Piano Chords, and I actually haven't spoken to Sean in in quite a minute, but yeah, we put out a release and the release show that we played uh, when I finally showed up, there was about four kids there. <laughs> there was about four kids at the meat grinder, and that show all hell broke loose. People were breaking shit. The four kids that were there. And, you know, I would rather play for four kids that gave a shit than 50 who don't. Yeah. Now, is there... Do you know if there's any copies of that still around? I actually never got one. I have probably about seven copies left, one. but it doesn't have any inserts. It's just the, the actual yeah. lathe. So, I can yeah. hook you up with one. I yeah, want one. For I sure. One too. Yeah, I'll give you one. <laughs> one. Uh, Will it even play? <laughs> um, it played on my record player just fine. The recording quality is... Horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> Horrendous. I bet. It, um, it, it wasn't, wasn't your side, it was 420? Yes, 420, <laughs> yeah. No, no, uh, no joke there. That was, that was totally a coincidence. It was such well. a coincidence. Yeah. Such a coincidence. Uh, okay, so there was Heavy Smoker, and then, uh... Heavy Smoker was once Dirty Needle had disbanded, when we would play shows and play those songs, we would just start calling it, um, Heavy Smoker, because... The stigma behind Dirty Needle was, it was done and it was over. So yeah. we decided we would keep it even more elite than it already was. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, 
Was there anything between those, and other than just still doing, I can't stop wondering, but was, was, were there any other projects in between those and what you're doing now? Um, I worked with a kid named Sawyer, and we had a band name called Tobacco Rip, because me and him had this bong, and we used to pack it full of tobacco, and we'd <laughs> take it, and you would feel like you were going to pass out after a while. Like Seriously, you would like, black out for a minute. It was so harsh, and it was so crazy. So then we just started making kind of like slam death metal music, just when we could, and he's now in uh, Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. so that's, that was just a small little side project that we played um, some suburban house shows with back when the suburban scram um, thing was kind of booming, and suburban the suburban scrams, and then um, I played in um, a band called Scrap Delegates recently, which um, is like, a, I met up with an underground um, hip-hop producer, <clears throat> named Drew Ferraro, Atavistic Plus, and um, we actually played last night, and uh, that's oh, been brother. that's been pretty cool. Uh, different different type of ways just to keep staying up on music, you know, trying different genres and things like that just for fun. Because now that I'm getting older, I'm not going to limit myself to one specific genre of music that I want to play. Yeah, and then um, I leave for tour tomorrow with Rochester City Police Department. And we played last night, and that is some heavy, heavy emo violence, almost on the brink of just being straight, straight hardcore or grind, you know? Yeah. Real, real intense, heavy, some sludgy points here and there. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Check it out. The release just dropped last night. Um, and I posted it on the podcast Facebook page, um, so you can find it there. I'll put the links. I'm going to have a slew of links. Yeah. Uh, for people to check this stuff out. I, I wanted to have you on specifically. Um, I feel like you are always doing stuff. Always. And it's awesome and super underrated and, like, like people don't give a shit about your bands. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, like, like, no, I, not a big, like, there's not a lot of people that do, and I think you do really great, like, you, you all your stuff's awesome. Thank you. Um, but it's not, like widely appreciated by our scene here yeah um so hopefully you know if anybody actually listens to this um check out avery's bands i mean check out joey's too um but avery check yeah. out amy heroin amy heroin that was we're the all here we're all here <laughs> yep. yeah the three of us were in a uh, a very short-lived screamo band called amy heroin we played live twice or something like that and pornographic images but pornographic that images was a, i was not you were involved. not in that was in pornographic images because joey and i were talking about some of those you know random meat grinder side projects yeah and it was john steve sean you cormac, cormac. It was this. It was like if if you two got in it, it would have been the absolute. It would have been dream page ninety nine. Dream <laughs> it would have been so sick. I'll, I'll I'll probably I'll put a I'll put a pornographic images track on. on it's the around. Too, I man. I have them on my I've computer. Yeah, I found them. Yeah, and yeah. John John's yeah. been uh, John Kiss. If you look up uh, paperclip distro on Bandcamp, mm-hmm. John Kiss has been going back and and putting a lot of this stuff online. Um, I don't, there aren't many people who are going to care about a lot of this stuff, but for those of us that do, John's, That's nice to have. John's putting it online, so you'll be able to download it for free. Is the where on there? The where is on there. Yes. Says, what about, uh, fuck, that one band, fuck the police. NWA is not on there. <laughs> no. With John, Steve, and uh, Nine Inch um, Canadian Um, Dick. L.A. Wannabes? No, Nine Inch Canadian Dick. Vomitous Society. Vomitous Society. Vomitous Society is... I don't know if that's on there. I don't even know, like... John and Steve from Endangered Youth and The Wear. Those bands have come up before. I love those bands. Um, they... They aren't fans of that project. <laughs> uh, I have... I have all the stuff. I don't know if... Either of them would ever want that stuff. On. Was that that cyber grind stuff? No, the Which cyber grind was, project. Yeah. Okay, John and Steve had a cyber grind project that was called Dick Disproportionate Jones. Manslaughter. Yes, something like that. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, dude, I remember I was in Stephen Ramis's room when we were all at the meat grinder, and he showed me every album he put out of that band, and it was awesome. Yeah, Disproportionate it was Manslaughter sick. is 
amazing. And, like, I want to re-release that stuff. That's tight, yeah. Like, I don't know, like... <laughs> I, nobody knows the members of Dignos Farm Animals. I don't even know the, the members. Nobody of it. knows that band is a is a mystery. Yeah. Um, not a lot of people have even heard that. I, I, Avery's heard it. I've heard. I have the CD. You put it in my Endangered Youth release. I have a I CD didn't, of it. I didn't put it in there. We take no response. We don't know anything about it. It just ended up in there. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It ended what, up in there. What What was Dignos Farm Animals? The weirdest shit you'll ever listen to. <laughs> Really weird. <laughs> yeah. Really weird. If, if I can, <clears throat> I will, um, I'll put it out because I actually have been trying desperately to start a tape, um, a tape label where I'll have bands come and record because I have a studio now at my home and I'll have bands come and record in my, in my, my studio, you know, whatever. And I'll put them out on, on tape for, for free and I'm calling it Gray PD and, um, what I'll do is I have that CD, I'll stream it, and I'll put it out as Grey PD. <laughs> yeah, first formal release. Oh, man. Yeah. People are going to eat that up. Oh, uh, hopefully. But yeah, I have that CD. That CD's... It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh... What, wait, okay, we, we were talking about... Oh, Vomitous Society. That's the name of the band that John and Steve were in before Endangered Youth. Yes. That was a grindcore band with uh, a vocalist who wasn't... wasn't Great and is no longer friends with any of us. Um, but I don't. I don't know if either of them want those things put up online. Yeah. If you if you go searching through MySpace, you'll find it. You, you can find it if you really want to hear it. But I won't share links. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really wants to hear that. No. It, there's a. It's it's amusing now to us, but uh, to anyone else, it's just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, your your earlier work is always your best work because you you never care. You don't know. You know now you care too much about it. You know. Well, I mean, I don't know if you care too much. I think there's some of it's good. Like there's filters there that you, like there's there's definitely passion and and things that you you get in early recordings, um, but then. I think generally you like refine your craft and get better at what you do. Right. Um, right. But sometimes there's definitely like magic in those like those first bands. Always. And you know, it, you capture things that you, you can't capture in any other situation. Right. It's a certain time and it's certain people. You yeah. know. Which is you know beautiful. That's that's what music should be. You know? Yeah. And I think there was uh, I don't know there was. There was definitely, like, this whole, like, very creative vibe going on during the the, the meat grinder years. Despite all the other garbage that was happening, like, we were all, like, excited to, like, play in bands with each other and, like, do a side project that will play once or prob- or maybe never play again. Right. Um, just because it was fun. Like that just... noise band with Eric Glendy, me, you, Joshua Strauss, and, uh... You there? I think you showed up. Was that was Haley in that band too? Josh Strauss's girlfriend at the time? No, she wasn't there. I don't remember this, but I definitely remember there's a video on YouTube, which Al Brundage always says is his most viewed video from some random noise show that happened in the basement. With Steve. And Steve, <laughs> yeah, Steve has like his face covered, like in a black shirt. And he's got an, like a like black a textbook umbrella. And stuff. Like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, I remember that. What show yeah, was he that? He crawled up the stairs and tried to drag me into the basement. Yeah, was, I, have, I have no idea who else was on that I show. I think it was Laundry Basket, Josh Strauss's solo stuff. You remember that? Yeah, that was a then, weird show. And then it just turned into a fucking party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got, it got real weird. Yeah, those <laughs> always did get weird. I mean, all of the shows towards the end of of that era were just... I mean, it was getting to the point where it was a party house. Yeah, and that that was disappointing. It, yeah. That it was, was really disappointing. It wasn't It wasn't about the music anymore. I mean, there was definitely... <laughs> he said it! <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It's true. That is, that's 100% um, true. When I look back on it now, I see that. You know? I mean, it was for some of us, and some of the bands, some of the, the things that happened, like, I don't know, like, I love those, like, like, some of those noise shows, like, with Strauss... He always did really interesting things. Like, despite yeah. being a super weird dude and really abrasive, he would always, like, do interesting, fun things. Um, but there were definitely 
So people who would like do noise um, that were just doing the same thing every show. It was more like show and tell. Look at this gear that I have. You yeah. know, crap like or, that. Or look at how I don't have any Buffalo, gear. Yeah. I don't do anything. Right. I was at a show in Buffalo a couple months ago. And uh, this kid played a noise set with a vibrator and a snare drum. Huh. And a microphone. And it actually sounded really good. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. And I, I love, I love like, weird experimental stuff. Yeah. I don't, I think, you know, some people just do this, when they do the same thing over and over again, it, it loses, it's, uh, just isn't interesting anymore. Yeah. Music, noise sucks anyways. Being honest, I like some noisy stuff. Like some I've been by itself. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the thing, though. If you're not incorporating and making it like performance art, it, that's that's what the difference is, right? Like I listen to uh, a noise, noise band. I taking listen to samples out of Fruity Loops. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I listen to like a, a noise band called um, Secret Abuse, and. You know, he, he gets guitar in there, he does ambient sort of things too, and he builds this noise, this wall of noise on top of it, and he'll shout or he'll speak over it and stuff like that. And I think that's interesting versus just running the same lawnmower type thing for 15 minutes, and then you, yeah. you add some screeches here and there, and everyone's just kind of like, when's this going to end, you know? Yeah. I'm going to start a noise band called Domestic Abuse. <laughs> There's probably already a band called them that's yeah. somewhere. Yeah. That I'm sucks. Sure there is. Like, that's <laughs> that's a good band name. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that there's one out there. Good times. Yeah. Some of the best. Uh, so I grew up with it, you know. Yeah, it was it was like I mean, I was I wasn't I feel like I was I mean, I'm a lot older than you guys, but I mean, those were still formative years. Yeah. I, I mean, went to my first meat grinder show when I was 17. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that was a long time. Now I'm 20, I turned 23 in two weeks, a week and a half. Yeah. You know? Like, that shit was nuts. Yeah. It's cool to see, though, for me, um, how many people that came out of that scene are still doing stuff. Yeah. Um, even though, like, it's not all stuff that I'm into, but still doing stuff, you know? And that's important. Um, all the dudes from Such Reckless Children... Colin and the Borns now. The Borns, a super fun man. Yep. And I think Matthias was in, if he's, he's or in lighters. in lighters. Yep. He's in lighters and they're cool. Jack is, I think he does solo kind of folky he's still stuff. Still the, the fever tones. In the fever tones. Who um, used to be better when they were plugged in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like Jack. I think he's a I, nice kid. I, I I like Jack a lot. Yeah. What's up, Jack? If you happen to be listening, yeah. I'll fight you. Um, <laughs> Um, like what, like what he's doing isn't necessarily my jam, but like it's cool to see that he's doing it. Um, he won that busking competition. Yeah, he won that. Uh, what was that over the summer and the spring, whatever it was. Yeah, he and won I mean, that. And uh, is it better to sell out or fade away? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You know, and Mackenzie's playing, and like yeah, all these, like, yep. all of these people that were were kids, and uh, you know, it's cool to see that they're still. Making music and being a part of the scene. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Outside of that, that, uh, that house. I probably so. would not be involved with. I probably wouldn't be as musically driven if if that's what I am. If it wasn't for the meat grinder, because that was a scene where everyone was accepted. If you had, you know, you had interesting stories to come into. You had different experiences, different different places, people you would never think you would be friends with. But everyone all, we had this one thing in common, yeah. and that was this music, no matter what it was, we were going to support each other, and it was a family. It yeah. really was a family, and that's something that I try to bring in every day to a scene, like, you know, now we've got got the Sank and, and the Bug Jar or whatever. I never go to the Bug Jar. I hate going to shows over there. No offense. No offense to anyone Smug who books bar. at the Bug Jar. I just don't really like going over there. I don't, I don't try to go down that route. But anyways... Like, I'll, I'll play at the Sank, and I'll, I'll see different people, kids younger than me, kids older than me, and I'll always tell them, you know, like, I'm never going to sit here and, and tell you you can't be here because you have something to offer. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, important for us is now, like, we've been in the scene for so long, I think it's important, like, even if a band sucks, 
like, and they're young. If, like if a band's, band, if a band sucks and they're old, then it's whatever. But like, if it's if it's like kids playing in bands, like support them. It's they're gonna be running so, it when we're gone. It's so important. Like, I can think of people um, who, like, you know, I was playing in a terrible band, and this dude, like, was like, "Keep doing what you're doing." Um, Mike Soxie, you're probably not listening, but you know, if you happen to be, like, thank you. Like, him and, and several other people in that pen- that scene I was in in Pennsylvania were super supportive and super cool to me. Yeah. And so, like, that that's why I'm doing all the things that I want to do is I want to, like, pass that on to... And that's why I care about doing all-age shows. And right. All-age shows are good, you know? It's a good thing. It's not always about showing up to get messed up, you know? Yeah. It's not always about that. And I have you and John and Steve to thank for that, too. Because when I was first starting I Can't Stop Wondering, it was trash. But you guys believed in me. Yeah. You know? You believed in what I was making. So, it helps. Now now it's my turn to do that for someone else. You know? Yeah. So, and that, bringing it around, like, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a part of this podcast network called Podcast of Pennsylvania. I, I saw you post about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so... You know, we talk about, like, uh, uh, Chris is graciously letting me be involved in this network and all that, despite me not being from Pennsylvania and interviewing people that aren't from Pennsylvania, but I learned what I learned about diversity in the scene from that scene in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, And I think it's so cool to see now, um, you know, the stuff that Tyler Tyler Troutman does as far as booking and, and Tyler from Condition Oakland. And um, Chris Castillo um, at Parglass, and um, just seeing like accepting bands of all ages, of all genres, right? And it's like if you're cool, you can you can be a part of this. Like it's, if you're cool people, you can be a part of yeah, this. Yeah, if you're it's a not, good person, you know, it's not necessarily even about like whether your music is is good or not, because I mean. It's all subjective. Yeah. It really is. Well, now I feel like a pretentious dick back, though. <laughs> well, I mean, you, we kind of... I think anyone who listens to, is listening that knows you would know that you were going to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going to be a surprise. No. <laughs> I, I was chuckling at your night terror cassette over there. What's up, Jared Johnson? Yeah. <laughs> Get you on here sometimes too. Yeah, you should get him on here. He's got a lot to say too. Yeah, he's, he's played it in some pretty good bands, as far as I'm concerned. He has, know? and he's doing a lot of cool things um, still in the scene and booking all. You know, he and I have worked together on several shows. At, Night uh, Terror was cool. Yeah, Night Terror yeah. was pretty cool. I caught them once at the Bug Jar. Probably with uh, an interview. Did you? Did you guys play? No, you didn't play that. No, I haven't played with Night Terror. That would have been cool though, because I think all those guys in that band are pretty nice. But, um, uh, was that I'm pretty on, sure uh, Dirty Needle played with Night Terror and the Meat Grinder. Night, Night Terror never played the Meat yeah, Grinder. I don't think they played yeah, they the did. Grinder. No. No, Sean booked them. Nope, they didn't play. Sean booked them. I know Swallowing but Bio never did. Happened. Yeah. Ethan's oh, side Ethan's project. Ethan's project did, but yeah. Night Terror never actually played. Uh, because every time, like, I've had several conversations with Jacob, and he's always like, I got to, he was like, I'm so glad I got to go to that, that last Nate or You show. I wish we could have played there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Jared's still doing really awesome stuff as far as, we, we've worked together on several shows at Vineyard Space. Yeah. Um, it's good to see he's still active too, because he's, he's turned into an older guy in the scene, you know? He's been around. He's been a around. Long time, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of reasons to be, like, excited about the future of, like, DIY music in, Ro- in Rochester. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's always going to be around. Yeah, it goes through, it you know, it'll, it'll dip down and then come back around and... I think that I think there's a lot of cool things happening with with stuff here in the scene. I think there's reason to be hopeful that it's going to continue and and be cool. We'll always push forward. Yeah. You know, I'll always be around making shitty music that no one listens to. Meanwhile, <laughs> I've given up completely on my local music scene. <laughs> what in Buffalo? Oh yeah. You ever go to that Hoyt house? I don't fucking Hoyt. You don't go to the Hoyt house? Because like, I know that I Selena. Buy Oh, great. Good. I've never been to the White House, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, fucking Selena. Yeah, meh. 
you really don't know what you're doing over there, you know, firing your sound guy because some girl's fucking with your with his equipment. And he, I don't want to, I don't want to talk so much shit because I really don't want to alienate myself. Completely you've already, you've that. already done a, a fair amount of shit. Talking. Yeah, there's been quite yeah. a bit coming from from Joe. And you, this was even before. There was more before you even got here. So good. Let, let's Great. just say that uh, Joey's views do not reflect the views. Yes. Of myself or me or Avery. <laughs> 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 or anyone but Joey himself. Yes, Joey is, and you know what? That's okay because that adds to the conversation. It does. It adds it to does. the conversation. <laughs> well, you know what? When you have a house and you book the same fucking bands at every fucking show every two fucking weeks, people are gonna get sick of it. That's my problem. <laughs> that is with true. Houses like that. That is true. And that's what they do. And that's that's part of what was. But wrong. they brought in two white rappers from fucking Westchester. Whoop de fucking do. You still got the same four fucking hardcore bands playing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that was part of what your alienated people ended your... ended the meat grinder yeah. without without you know like I said I I'm gonna try to not do a lot of shit talking but like yeah I, when I a, try not when to. someone was putting his own project on every single show it kind of well it just it wasn't really fair to uh, the rest of us who had been there and were running it as a collective for right. years and then he shows up and and put himself on every show yeah. So and that does tend to get boring after a while, you know. How many times can you see the same performance playing, you know, yeah. with the same twenty kids that that show up, yeah. you know, that are a part of the scene collectively, you know? But I did, I did really like it when it first started up with um, with all those bands. I loved it. Yeah, and I think it, it kind of, uh, despite how things turned out with that particular person that we, I mean, his name's, like, with Sean. Yeah. Um, his name's come up before, so I'm not gonna... I have nothing bad to say about the guy. He's never done anything really too, too, um, too harsh to me. I, we just don't talk anymore. We've just, we've lost touch completely, you know? Yeah, and anything that's, anything that's happened, it's, it's in the past, and I'm oh, over yeah. it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not here to, to shit talk, but what I, what I was going to say is... Despite you know how things didn't really end up good, yeah, with with him and, and some of the things that he did as far as booking and otherwise, um, I think it did expose a lot of people, a lot of those kids to noise rock, to, no, to noise and performance art. Um, oh, they're all over his dick in Fredonia. Is that where he is now? He's Fredonia. No, I played out there and there was. There was a little Sean Beard little spin-off act where this dude fucking grabbed his cock and fucking ran around wearing fucking corpse paint and hmm. doing harsh noise and everybody was all over it and I'm like, well, fuck this, I'm gonna drink beer outside and go grab a slice. <laughs> a cute little hipster girl working the counter gave me an extra slice of pizza because I had my drumstick sticking out my pocket and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fredonia, New York, shouts out, Canada way, yo. <laughs> the life of Joey Lanzone. Never a dull moment. The life and times. The life and times. My friend Greg accurately uh, described my life as living the dream that nobody ever wanted to have. <laughs> <laughs> so Joey, if you were going, if someone, if they were going to make a biopic about your life, what actor do you think should play you? Oh, shit. Oh, that's a good one. <clears throat> Dead or alive? Uh, you could you could pick you pick one for each, or maybe it's the same person. No, like, is it, can the actor be dead? Yeah, pick one, oh, one sure. alive, yeah. one dead. Yeah, whoever. Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> right? Great. And, uh, alive? Mm, that guy. I'm gonna say, uh, I don't know young actors. I would say for Joey, because his life is so... Out of control and crazy, uh, fucking Charlie Sheen, HIV positive. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Sheen. No, you know who should play Joey Lanzone? Corey, <laughs> Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Corey you know Feldman. Should, you know who should play Joey Lanzone? And it's gonna be his breakout role, and he's gonna win an Oscar for it. Michael Sarah. Because <laughs> it's gonna be like it'll be like his like edgiest, like darkest character, <laughs> and it's gonna be his breakout role, and he's gonna <laughs> win an Oscar for it. Oh Michael God. Sarah as Joey Lanzone. <laughs> I do kind of have the mustache going. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> Juice catcher. Corm's been growing his mustache too. It looks like shit. It's awesome. Doesn't Corm's dad have like the like 
nicest. Dude, he is the coolest guy I've ever met. Cormstad is an incredible person. I haven't I haven't seen his uh, his mustache. Corpse. It, not much to see, but no, it's yeah. there. <laughs> you can't tell. It's there. <laughs> it's flesh colored. Yeah, it's there though. I like it. Corm's the man. What's up, Corm? Yeah, what's up, Corm? I was happy I got to see him last night for a little bit. I'm probably gonna see him tonight too. Nice, nice. Yeah, try to work on some stuff before I leave. This is the first time I've seen you that it hasn't been like you at a show that I booked. I know. I feel like if I want to hang out or see Avery and Corm, I gotta book him on a show. No, that's not true at all. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm I work. Busy too, man. I have three twelve-hour days a week and shit like that, and I work uh, a nine-to-five job, which I really, actually, I've been enjoying and learning quite a bit through that. Um, but yeah, it's just it's been tough, you know. I'll try to make time on the weekends or or whatever to play shows or do what I can, yeah. but. Honestly, sometimes I just, I lay on the couch for yeah. like 10 hours a day, and I love that. I'm good with that, you know? Listen to music, spin some records. Yeah. You know? Drink a little coffee. I actually, for as much of uh, I'd say some a, a, a whatever that I am, I don't drink coffee at all. I really, I try not to, unless were I'm you, at a diner. So okay, so you were, were you ever a coffee drinker? No, I've never really been one. I like Mountain Dew. Love Mountain Dew. I'm good with that, and I'll drink, you know, like the throat comfort tea after or during shows if I'm playing in multiple bands like I did last night. Yeah. You know, just to I'll, keep. Yeah. You know. That's a. Uh, so long. That's a difficult. Like when you're doing it all the time. It's. Yeah, it's. You, you know, you can get away with it if you're not. If you're only playing like once a month or whatever, but if you're playing like almost every week. It takes a toll on your voice. Yeah. Even if it's one show out of the week. So, I, you know, going on tour. Yeah, it'll be, that'll be the real test, you know? We're lucky we have a couple days off here and there where I can just kind of, you know, not talk as much. From first to last, we're not going to classify from first to last. (laughs) That that makes my stomach churn. (laughs) Come on, a little uh, Dance Gavin Dance. No, no. He wasn't in Dance Gavin Dance. (laughs) <laughs> I I not I don't think I have ever listened to that band at all. No, I like don't. not a single song. No, I've never really been into that uh, um, core uh, metal slash death metalcore and like. I what mean, they were calling post hardcore. Post hardcore, yeah. Years ago. I think you're yeah. thinking about Jerome's dream, but he he didn't smoke. I Jerome's dream is. I I Scrams. I will I always all, listen to Jerome's dream. Jerome's dream. I have their um, I have their uh, seeing means more than safety uh, on uh, sort of record. I have that. I picked it up for like yes. seventy five bucks. Want a skull split. Yeah, you do have that skull split, don't you? I want one. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I have uh, I have the uh, Spirit of Versailles Caligari number one out of five hundred on play. That I have you've that. Got one, of, you've got the. I've got three Spirit of Versailles. Yeah, you got you got like the. Don't you have like? Don't you have a Spirit of Versailles tattoo? Yeah, I got it right on the back of my neck. Yeah. The number pressing out of the five hundred, which was. I can get one out of five hundred. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Spirit of Versailles. I grew up on that. They got me through some of the, the toughest times. You know, Indian summer. Indian summer. I have I have them on record too. They actually just put out. I think within they just the, put out in, in the last two years they put out a bunch of um, live recordings and it's called Simple Arithmetic or something like that. It's beautiful. Check it up on Bandcamp. Cool. That wow. shit is cool. Spirit of Sum- or, uh, Indian Summer is absolutely off the hook. They are one of the best, if not the best, screamo. You will listen to. I got a Makata record. How's that? Makata? Like uh, South Dakota, like nineteen ninety. Is this what you were telling me about that one day? When we were so. talking? Yeah. It's fucking twinkly. Twinkly stuff. Twinkly grind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that? Oh, this isn't this isn't good good podcasting, me not being able to think of this band. Oh, uh, my head in clouds. Do you remember? I that remember band? something about that. Yeah. What is that? I think they only like released like maybe four songs. Um, and it was on. It's definitely. It was definitely on MySpace. Um, super happy sounding twinkly guitars, and then just 
like brutal sounding like I remember high, something about that. Yeah. Like, screamo type vocals. Yeah. I like that. That's good. McDonald Duck. I actually I went to New York City about a year ago to date and uh, we played at this place called ABC No Rio. Oh, and we yeah. played with uh, Capacities and, um, and Pure. Yeah. I can't stop wondering, Orchid. dude. Members of Orchid. And I was so scared. I didn't talk to any of them. But I talked to their bassist. And she was such a nice woman. And these guys rolled up in this van. Had like spray paint all over it. This thing, I could have sworn it was going to break down. <laughs> but it was the coolest thing. And they played one of the most intense, like, um, hardcore or screamo, whatever you want to call it. One of the most intense sets I have ever fucking seen. This shit was nuts. It was off the hook. And there was probably 200 kids at the show. Yeah. It was an incredible experience. Orchid is uh, one of the few bands I'd probably get a band tattoo of. Orchid is, dude, they will. They were one of my gateway screamo bands. That's, 36 yes. Days Syndrome is an incredible song. You know, like, it's just, they're, they're crazy. And the cat turned to smoke. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That that band is fucking nuts. I don't know what they were doing, what was going on in that time of their life, but some that heavy had shit. Some, some heavy shit. Fuck. And they were playing with Jerome's Dream and Seisha all the time. Yeah, Those guys like toured the, together. The yeah. Dream Orchid. yeah, the Jerome's Dream Orchid tour, and then they played ABC No Rio as well. So it's just it's historic. It's it, it's cool that you got to play at a place that is historic, like ABC No Rio. Yes. Um. It meant the world to it's, me. It's really... I feel like it's really hard to get shows in New York City. I, you know, they reached out to, to Cormac and I, mm-hmm. and they were like, we really want you to play. And at first I thought this was like a total joke. And then I, when I got there, they showed me they have this... Um, up above, there's a photo lab above the actual venue... And then there's a library or an archive of all old punk zines that they used to put yeah. out. Because ABC No Real used to be a punk squat before it was like a, an established historic venue. Mm. And the person that bought it after it was a punk squat bought it for like a dollar in New York wow. City. And then they turned it into this venue in this art space, this collective. And the scene, honestly, it reminds me so heavily of what the meat grinder was mm. back when it was thriving. Because everyone there was so nice, so friendly very cool it was always down to talk about bands um uh the one the one woman that booked us she works at a bar she took us out to the bar after and you know we we're all talking having yeah. a great time and it was incredible i met some really great people um members of capacities were in you and i at one point too mm-hmm. so i got to meet some very like um you know head screwed on straight people that listen to similar types of music that i do and i really enjoyed that experience and abc no rio Aside from the meat grinder, will always be what heaven is. If there's such a thing <laughs> as heaven, you know, it's ABC No Rio twenty four seven. Place is awesome. Word. Yeah, only... except you can smoke in there. In the meat, that, that would be in heaven. the meat grinder, you, 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 you weren't supposed to. Everybody did. Anyway. Everyone did anyway. Um, and the the guys that were doing construction in the basement were smoking and drinking. Well, they were, too. They were drinking all day when they were. Painting that no, yeah, they fucking disappeared, and I went down there, and I came up with like a thirty rack. <laughs> so fucked up. Do you remember when John Kiss during Endangered Youth one set the big cigar? The big. I took a puff after it, and it was the sweatiest, like deteriorating, wet thing. I was like, Ugh. I was like, gagging. And I was like, you can keep that, man. Do you remember that time I puked in the sink? Oh my god! <laughs> I remember. I remember. I can't remember. We were on um, was it Field Street at? Was it the results house? And you started throwing up all over the chair and all over yourself. <laughs> Do you remember that oh, night? Yep. Yeah. I, I, I really? tried to grab a box of beer to <laughs> put it in the gap. So I just threw up beer and it just went straight through onto my pants. Oh my god. Joey, Joey was the king of party fouls. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> I don't spill drinks anymore though. And I don't throw up anymore. I, that's it. That's, a, that's an a, that's accomplishment. That's a positive thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, but the story behind the, the cigar during the set... Yeah, what's up with that? Because that was during a point where we were not letting anyone smoke in that basement. Mm-hmm. And just because it was getting to be too much, you couldn't yeah, breathe down there in that tiny yeah. little room. And so... And Steve was still straight edge. That's right, and yeah. John was just like, it would be really funny if I, like smoked a giant cigar during one of our sets. 
And Steve, Steve was like, he was just like, yeah, that would be hilarious. I don't even care. You could totally do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he played the full set, like, with the cigar hanging out of his mouth. He killed it. That he, was a good he set. Played, he played, like, that was maybe the best he'd ever played. So we were just like, maybe we should let him smoke a cigar. cigar every show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, the reunion show... That big packed out at the Flying Squirrel, you know, I was just talking about that earlier. It was huge packed out, Meat Sweats, um, X Perseverance, X, I can't, uh, Endangered Youth, and then Tyranitar played that show. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a crazy show. That was a really fun show. It was a lot of fun. I had a blast. I had a blast at that show. Everyone, if you look at pictures, everyone's smiling. In every single picture, everyone was happy to be there, you know? Yeah. Well, for us, I mean, there, there were people that, like, gave us crap about, like, getting back together so soon. You but needed it. It wasn't, it wasn't, like, it wasn't for the attention. It was just, like, we needed to take a break. At at that point, we didn't think we were ever going to play together again. Yeah. And uh, so we were just saying it was done, and then um, that was, like, even though it didn't last long after us getting back together, like... I think it was important as far as for our friendships, like the four of us in the band, and so like we were we were just super happy to be playing with yeah. each other again, man. It was like kind of giving us closure after all of the uh, the drama that had gone down um, in between the band breaking up, and then so those those couple of months, like that that was a, a super fun. Uh, yeah, that was experience. Cool. I was excited to see you guys get back together. I'll be the first to Have say. Have a re 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 reunion. <laughs> yeah, you guys eventually. You should like when John's in town or something. Just do do like a super secret show. You know, you guys could still do it. It's it's nobody get too excited, but it's been like it gets talked about. Yeah. Um. You know, all all four of us were all together for for Steve's wedding the other week. Yeah, how was that? Oh, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. I saw the pictures, and so I mean, it was. We were mostly just happy to see each other, but like, we 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 talk about the possibility of it happening someday. I'm not saying it will ever, but I'm not going to say it won't ever either. But you know, it was actually cool. Josh Richards was there early too. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So we saw, and Josh wasn't there at the same time as Eric, which not because there's any problem with them. Josh just had to leave the party before Eric got there, but um. So all 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 five, uh, you know, yeah. all five people that were in that band were there, and uh, so it was real cool. Yeah, I remember. I remember Freaky. There's a couple endangered youth shows where he'd bring his daughter, his yeah. little teeny daughter, and I thought that was just the coolest thing, you know. Just I don't know how old she was at the time, but definitely under ten years old. Yeah, you know, she was really young. And I thought that was cool that he felt safe enough and comfortable enough. You know, a, a punk or a DIY scene to bring his his young daughter around. Yeah. You know, I, I think that I think was that cool. says something about about the fact that like like he knew that like despite the fact that we all were crazy and had our problems, like we were respectful. It was yeah, we all cared about each other enough that nobody was gonna mess with this kid. No, not at all. I thought that was if I ever have a kid, which I don't plan to because I can't even take care of myself. I don't know how I'd be able to take care of a kid. Um, I would definitely want, you know, my son or daughter to be involved in, you know, I'm going to make music till I'm dead. Yeah. I want them to be involved in that too, you know? Yeah. I don't want some lax, bro. Come on. <laughs> it's such a disappointment. <laughs> Speaking of, of members of Endangered Youth, Joey had an interaction with us before he knew us. Wasn't so it on you Craigslist? Should tell that, you should tell that story. Yeah. So I was going to, uh, try out to be the endangered youth's first guitarist, but I was 14 years old, so they wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what exactly did Steve say in that email? Uh, you, should, you should find this. Do you still have I would like to account? see that. I would like to no. see that. Oh, man. I was going to say, if you did, I'd want you to screenshot it and send it to me, because I would love to see this. That was a long time ago. Because I'm obsessed with documenting things that no one else cares about. Yeah, I love that. Which I is that. which is why I've started this podcast, is so I can get 
get I nerdy and talk about all this, all of these like weird random side projects Hell that yeah. no one cares Keep about. Having the weirdest compulsion to take all these Hershey's Kiss wrappers and put them in my weed bag. <laughs> I think I think the podcast is actually a good talk idea. Shit I like nobody it. cares about. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's a great idea. It's a beautiful thing. You know, it's a way to stay active. You know, and yeah. stay musically inclined too. Well, you know? I just I love podcasts. Like I listen to podcasts all the time. So, um, I just figured might as well start one. It's something something to do. And hell yeah, share, I'm down with it. Share some stories. So hopefully, hopefully there are people out there that are enjoying this. Tell me. You can tweet at me at invisible like you. The letter U. I still have that same in- I like Twitter that. name <laughs> that I've had forever. <laughs> Or you can find me on Instagram at Dead and Dreaming, and yes, that's Counting Crows reference. Ah, I don't okay, care okay. How punk or not punk that is? Whatever. Because I think Counting Crows are awesome. We all that's have it. We all have our guilty. Simon and Garfunkel really get at me. I I love Gwen Stefani. I think she I think she's an excellent musician and she's a beautiful woman. So what you You know, no, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. I no doubt was incredible, incredible. Those I love them. No blend. So funky, dude. They were I I love Gwen Stefani and you know Adam Levine from Rune Five. I will say I wish I was him. I wish I was him so bad sometimes. He's got perfect life, perfect body. I wish I was Jason Segal sometimes. He's he's like okay, like Rune Five's a terrible band. They suck. They're awful. But if I saw if I saw Adam Levine on the on the street, like he looks, he dresses cool, he's got tattoos. Yep. I would be like, you were like. Like, he, he pretty much dresses just like, uh... Us. Well, Us. like, Chris Caraba from the, like, from Dashboard in, yeah. in the early 2000s. So I would just, like, assume that he's into, like... He probably is. Late 90s and early 2000s emo. He probably is. He's probably Wait, been to basement shows. Wasn't he in a ska band? Didn't you tell me this? Who? I think so. Was Adam Levine in a ska band? That's something to look up. That is something to look up. That's something and to look up. And if I can find links... That yeah, promote that shit. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta share the good word. Yeah, yeah. I think I just think he's a you know he's a well rounded musician too. That's the thing. He's a very well rounded musician, and I I can appreciate that for what it is. And all I know is his voice is really annoying. Yeah, well you know, my voice is annoying too half the time. <laughs> you know, I'm like always just the worst, but. I do think that he, I think, I just think he's the coolest guy. You know, he's like a mainstream celebrity, and I can break out of, you know, the underground. I think Adam Levine and Gwen Stefani, I love them. I love them. <laughs> Avery's favorite show is The Voice, apparently. <laughs> no, no, I've never seen The Voice. I don't, I don't have cable or whatever. No, he was in an alternative band. What does, what does an alternative, what Yeah, what defines a an, blanket term? Yeah. Well, it was 1994. And oh yeah, that's the first name for Maroon Five until two thousand one. Ah, wasn't uh, I read somewhere that the that one guy who was in the new Star Wars movie was in a ska band. What? The guy who was like the uh, I don't remember like what what he was called. He was the pilot at the beginning of the movie. Oh, that guy. I didn't yeah. see it yet. I haven't seen. I read it. that he was it's not worth it. Well, I'm, I, I enjoyed it for the record. Um, Have you I seen read... all other six of them? So I think I think yeah. the the villain, if he were if he were like in this world now, he'd be in the Scrams. I I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't. He's doubt kind it. of a whiny little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but I, I I still think the movie was enjoyable. And yeah. yeah, I got to take my younger cousins to see it. So yeah, how was your your Christmas? Your holiday. It was it was good, man. It was a lot of family time. I didn't get a lot of time with other friends, but a lot of family time. That's good, though. I actually That's got important. to hang out with uh, the two guys that I played in my very first band with, and uh, reminisce with them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do a pod- I wanted to do a podcast with both of those guys at some point, but um, you know, we hadn't all three been in the same room in four years. So we just decided that we were just going to catch up, hang out, and, and yeah. just be friends and not try to not try to get a podcast out of it. I'm going to make more tea real quick. Not that this is any less of a thing because it's recorded. Yeah, right. I mean, you get comfortable eventually.
Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Joey Lanzone and Avery Reebsum. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to make some clarifications and corrections. Things that just uh, slipped my mind during the conversation that we had. I just like to get the facts straight. So uh, that's what I'm going to try and do. And I'm going to do it at the end of every episode instead of the beginning of the next episode. Like I did on this one, obviously. So... The curl and drag, as far as I know, they are still at least a semi-active band. They played a show in June of 2015, so within the last year. So there you go with that. Um, now, Joey mentioned several bands like Bad Taste, and I don't even remember who else, but some punk bands. Um, right after I'd asked him about bands that played at the Meat Grinder, and he listed a bunch of bands that did not pl actually play at the Meat Grinder, with the exception of Robin and the Hoods and Flip Shit. Those two bands did. Those others in that list did not. So nobody cares but me. But I like to get the facts straight. Um, but yeah, and you did hear L.A. Wannabes with their Rumble in My Ass demo. If you would like to get those MP3s. You can send me a Facebook message, uh, Adam Kramer, or message So I've Been Told, the, the page, and I will uh, try to get those to you. So the last thing I want to clarify is that the name of the actor who plays Poe in Star Wars The Force Awakens is Oscar Isaac, and he did, in fact, play in some ska bands. He played in Blinking Underdogs and The Worm. So if you are into Ska and into Star Wars, you can do some research on the internet and find those bands. So thank you once again for listening. You guys are awesome. I'm going to leave you with a track by Pornographic Images, another band that was mentioned on this episode. And I really hope you enjoy this. Have a great new year.